Hey, Master Izuchi, what do you do whenever you're not overseeing Arena Quest? Oh, well, I just stand here looking at Pokemon. Looking at Poke- what? You know Pokemon. Creature monsters from a different world. They have different powers. There's a lot more of them than we have monsters in this world. Really? Huh. Those are kind of interesting. What do you think it'd be like if our monsters were in that world? Alright, the point of this video is to look at the monsters in the Monster Hunter universe and see what kind of Pokemon they would be in the Pokemon universe. Based on their way they look and their attack patterns. And if I can't decide on that, then I'll be look at their etymology to see what they're named after. So, first things first, speed round. Let's look at the small monsters. Feline, basic cat. Doesn't have anything special. It's going to be a normal. Maylinx. It's like a feline, except it likes to steal shit, so it's going to be dark. Vespoid. Flying bug. but Easy to do. Bug flying. Horniture. It's a bug that lives on the ground and hops. I'm kind of leaning on normal bug. Not normal type bug type, but just a bug type. And then Kelby. It's just a deer. Nothing special. Normal type. Most line, they have moss on their back, they live in the dirt, uh, grass bug, I mean, ah, grass normal, no, grass, fuck. Most line, previous reasons mentioned, ground grass, Apnoff, same thing, it's kind of hard, so I'm thinking about, was thinking about putting it at still type. But it's just going to be a normal type because Apseros has a hard shell. And that one would be fun to have a normal steel type. Velocipray. Nothing special puts you to sleep, but... Yeah, let's just leave it at that, so it's a normal type. Genprey. Likes to paralyze you. Electric type. Ioprey. Poison type. Easy enough. Cephalos. is going to be a ground type because it swims through the dirt. Bulfango. Normal type. And with all the small monsters done, we're going to look at the big monsters now. Alright, before we get started on the big monsters, there's a few things that I have to get through. One, drones and the great var variants of the smaller monsters, I'm not going to get through because they're going to have the same reasoning as the smaller monsters. Two, I'm not going to go through deviants, variants, or subspecies unless there's a significant difference between the kinds of attacks they use. And three, I'm only doing this by generation because there's over 300 monsters. And I don't want this video to take too long. So, with that, let's get started with Yayan Kutku. Everybody knows this adorable little bird. Has this adorable little frilly crown thing around his neck. But, it doesn't really have much going for it, other than it flies in fire, so it's obviously going to be fire flying. Second, we have the Yangaruga. No, this is not a subspecies. No, this is not a deviant. And no, it's not a variant. This is a cross between a Yangkutku and a Raytheon. So, what kind of attacks does it use? It is has a poisonous tail and uses fire quite a bit. So, with that being in mind, there's no way I could not make it as anything but a fire and flying type. I mean, a fire and poison type, not a fire flying type. And at some monsters, they'll be able to use like fire, and we'll get into that later. But just because they can use it doesn't mean I would. Name that, uh, name them that type. Is that they have to use it prominently. So who do we have next? Next we have Gypsaros. It doesn't really fly, so it's poison type. That's about all I can think. It uses flash, but it prominently uses poison and physical attacks. So I can't really call it a flying type. And I can't call it a ground type, even though it isn't weak to electric. But that's kind of because of its rubbery hide. 
So, Gyps Roast would just be a pure normal type. A uh, pure poison type. Next, we have Raytheon. This is an example of a monster that can use a certain attack, but I'm not going to name it as that type because uh, it's not, it doesn't use it as often. Raytheon does use fire, but it's not as prevalent as its normal attacks, poison attacks, and it does fly. So I can't come to myself to call this anything but a poison flying type. On the other hand, we have the Rathalos, who does both fire and poison type moves, but it also flies, so it's kind of hard to put it in there. But I've been poisoned by this so many times. But then again, his only poison type attack is his when he goes up and attacks you with his claws. So... Yeah, it's just going to be a fire flying type. And it does fly cu quite constantly. After Rathalos, we have the Kezu. This one... I want to call it nor just plain electric, but it kind of looks like a bug to me. So... And I guess you can classify its one attack as bug bite. So let's look, let's look at the etymology. If... Materials, notes. Why is the etymology not on here? Okay, I thought the etymology was on here. So, physiology. Kezu is a large, pale wyvern with flabby, rubbery hide, which they constantly keep damp, similar to that of an amphibian. Many of their blood vessels and veins can be seen through their pale skin. Their tail features a specialized orifice, which bonds to the ground, during electrical attacks and helps them cling in onto cave ceilings. Their mouth features a row of sharp teeth similar to that of leeches. Kezu feet lack claws and instead have suction pads like toes to assist them in climbing and hanging from cave walls and ceilings. Spending most of their lives in the dark, their eyes have regressed greatly, though they make up for this with superb sense of smell, which is weird because they don't have noses. Um... A layer of fat helps them keep them warm and prolonged the time they can spend hunting for food. Kezu have extendable neck which allows them to grasp and ambush prey from afar, such as from a ceiling. Kezu have <laughs> to reproduce a paralyzed creature, inject their young, known as whelps. The Whelps grow inside their victim until it dies, or when they are strong. Ooh, that's, uh, okay. So that last sentence, combined with the fact that they are named after leeches, kind of, um, nails it for me. Kezu will be electric bug. Next we have Bizarios. Obviously he's going to be a rock, but will he have a different type? Well, he does use fire, uh, fire gas, and poison gas, but, and he does have a fire blast, but he mainly just runs at you and charges you, so I can't call this one a fire type. So, Bizarios would be a mono normal, I mean, mono rock. Gravios, on the other hand, would be Bizarios' evolution, and he will use fire a lot more often than Bizarios will, so I will call Gravios a fire type. I have never hunted Monoblos, but I assume it's going to be like Diablos, except with one horn. So, let's look at his physiology. Monoblos are large vibrants with a brown rock-hard texture to their carapace, and very closely resemble Diablos. Unlike Diablos, however, Monoblos' head is akin to a Ceratopsian's dinosaur. Namely, a Styracosaurus, featuring a beak mouth, a long spiral, and a pointed nasal horn, giving it a drill-esque look, and a large frill on the back of its head, which, when engaged, gains several red markings. Additionally, it's 
adorned with spikes of various size. Monopolos has a pair of small yellow eyes with vertically slipped pupils. Its black back also features a frill-like carapace. The tail club is more like a mace compared to Diablos' lined with four spikes on each side and a single one at the end. Okay. Abilities. While they have no breath attacks, their war is considered a lethal weapon itself. They are also very physically capable, able to fight off hunters with horns, thrusts, and tail swings. Being able to tunnel beneath the sands in the desert also means they can sneak up on any potential threats. So yeah, Monoblos is pretty much the same as Diablos. So, we're going to go with both of them at the same time. They go on the ground to attack, and they have raw card um, skin. So, it's going to be a ground rock. Not that we don't have enough of those. Next, we have Cephadrome. Which, like I said, we're not going to be naming because it's just the same as Cephalos. Then, Plesioth. Hip checks for days. Um, so Plesioth, besides it being a freaking nightmare to fight, and can hip check you to oblivion, it doesn't have much going for it other than it's a fish and it can shoot water, so pretty much the only thing I can name it as is water. Maybe water, water normal since it can walk on two legs on the ground, but, and the hip check, so... With that being said, yeah, we will call it into a water normal type. Now, Kieran, there's a... So, to go into things, not all Elder Dragons will be Dragon type, and Kieran's the re one of the main reasons why. Kieran is not a dragon. It is an electric horse, and that's it. So, Kieran will be... Electric, but he also has really, really tough hide that most weapons will bounce off of unless you get into purple sharpness. So, with that in mind, I will call Kieran a rock electric type. Now, Lao Shun Long will obviously be a dragon type, it is a giant dragon that you have to go through siege to kill. His type, his other typing, however, is a lot less, com uh, a lot more complex. So, physiology. Lao Shun Yong are essentially hulking elder dragons with copper red bodies and cream colored underbellies. They have numerous dark gray spikes on their necks, backs, and tails. They have comparatively small limbs with dark gray hands and feet and long tails. On their heads, they have eight large horns that curve backwards and smaller horns on their front of their paws upward and curve back slightly. Their mouths have small teeth with several large, te larger teeth on the outside of their mouths. Abilities. It lacks any sort of elemental or special abilities and instead relies solely on its immense physical bulk and strength being strong enough to smash through huge forts with enough effort and barrel straight through. Villages, towns, without a second thought. Despite never weaponizing it, they do have some dragon energy stored in their bodies. Alright. So, I can only call this a mono dragon. Then, we have Fatalis. Which, lore-wise, he will be the legend, uh, the main legendary of a Pokemon game if he was ever put in one. But this one's kind of obvious. Dra he's a dragon. He uses fire breath. He'd be a dragon fire. But for fun, let's just read its behavior and physiology. Fatalis is a traditional black dragon with a long serpentine neck and tail. Along with a pair of large yet muscular wings, its body is covered in rigid black scales and lined with white spines along its back. Its forehead, its head features four black facing horns and rows of enlarged teeth and fine like ears, fin like ears. 
Like many other monsters, Fatalis has a pale underbelly and like most other Elder Dragons, it possesses six limbs. Its four limbs are surprisingly thin, be lying immense strength. Abilities. Fatalis is an extremely powerful monster and able to wipe out entire hunting parties with relative ease. Its primary weapon lies in its flame breath. Fabled to have reduced a kingdom to ashes within a single night, which can be utilized to produce either stream of fire or explosive projectiles. Fatalis is also able to release a cloud of flammable dust and is set... It... it uh... Fatalis is able to release a cloud of flammable dust and set it... A light, okay, so light it, similar to Testra, and is also known to whip it, use its whip-like tail and powerful bone-crushing jaws to defend it from nearby attackers. Interestingly, the massive black blade located within a cave in Pokey Village has been noted to regenerate after Fatalis materials are mi min yeah, mined from it. So, yeah, that pretty much sets it off. It's a dragon fire. Not only that, Crimson Fatalis, White Fatalis, and Dire Fatalis still all use fire and dragon type attacks. So, yeah. Fatalis is a dragon and fire type. And with that, the first generation of Monster Hunters list comes to an end. If you disagree with a certain monster, or what I typed them as, Feel free to leave a comment down below and tell me why. And with that being said, like the video, subscribe to see more. We will be doing the rest of the generations. And I'll see you later.